then the statement of Allah Alam Najalahu Ainain Walisan and Washakatain Wahadainahu Najdain. How Allah Azwajal is reminding the individual that does he does he feel that he will be left? No one sees him, his Lord does not see him, his Lord does not monitor him. And we mentioned what the Shaykh mentioned in that regard. And then the statement where Allah Azwajal says, Have we not given him two eyes and a tongue and two lips? And we guided him to both paths, or we clarified for him uh, both paths. And we mentioned um, two weeks ago. We didn't mention we did we mentioned from the book of Sheikh Uthaymin, Rahim Allah Taala, but we didn't read it uh, word for word. So one of the brothers, Jazakallah Khairan, requested that we read from the statement of Sheikh Uthaymin uh, because the brother felt that it would be beneficial. And from that, what Sheikh Uthaymin said in this regard, he said, هَذِهِ ثَلَاثَ نِعْمْ مِنْ أَكْبَرِ نِعْمْ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ He said, these blessings are from the greatest of blessings upon the individual. Yani, the two eyes, and actually it's more because you have the, but he mentions the eyes, he's considering that as one blessing, one blessing, the tongue and the two lips. So he's saying, having the blessing of the eye, having sight, and a tongue and the lips. So he's considering it as three blessings. So he says that this is from the greatest of blessings which Allah which Allah has bestowed upon the human. He says, Alam Najalahu Ainain Yani Yubusiru Bihima wa Yorafi Fihima. That the individual can see and he can use these eyes for sight. And he says, Wahatani Ainani to Addiani il al Kalb. مَا نَظَرَ إِلَيْهِ الْإِنسَانِ And these two eyes lead, they, are, they lead to and they are connected to the heart. And that which the individual looks at, it has an impact on his heart. فَإِن نَظَرَ نَظْرَةً مُحَرَّمَةً كَانَ آثِمًا وَإِن نَظَرَ نَظْرًا يُقَرِّبُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ كَانَ غَانِمًا وَإِذَا نَظَرَ إِلَى مَا يُبَاحُ لَهُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُحْمَدُ وَلَا, يض... ولا يُذَمْ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ هَذَا النَّظْرُ مُفْضِيًا إِلَى مَحْظُورٍ شَرْعِي فَيَكُونُ آثِمًا بِهَذَا النَّظْرِ The Shaykh Rahmatul Ali, he clarifies this blessing, he says, so the eyes, these two eyes, they are directly connected to the heart. And whatever the individual looks at, it has an impact on the individual's heart. It has an impact on the individual's heart. And this is something, we're going to read what the Shaykh says and then we're going to expound on it. So he says, so if the individual looks at something haram, he is blameworthy, he has committed a sin. And if the individual looks at something which gains him nearness, nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal, then this individual has benefited, he has Obtained a reward, he has gained nearness to Allah Azza And if the individual looks at something which is permissible, not not haram, or gaining him nearness to Allah, but it's just something permissible. Mathalan, he looks at a car. He looks at um, uh, uh, he looks at a piece of clothing. He looks at a car. He looks at the ocean. He looks at the ocean. He looks at a mountain. He looks at his child, he looks at his wife. That's something permissible. If the individual looks at something permissible, he is not praised, nor is he blamed. Meaning, he does not have a sin, nor does he have a reward. As long as what he has looked at does not lead to something blameworthy. Does not lead to something blame, blameworthy. We're going to translate, but let's that part, Mathurin. Yani, so when Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Alam najalahu ainain," and the individual should reflect and realize that the sight that Allah Azza wa Jal has given you and the eyes that Allah has given you is from the tremendous blessings, as the Sheikh mentioned, from the greatest of blessings that Allah Azza wa Jal has given a human is the eyes and the sight. Are the eyes and the sight? And just like Sheikh Uthaymi mentioned, if an individual uses that, 
to gain nearness to Allah Azawajal, then he has benefited from that blessing. And that's actually from the indication that the individual is showing gratitude. As Allah Azawajal said about Dawood and the family of Dawood, اِعْمَلُوا عَالَ دَعُودَ شُكْرًا Allah Azawajal says, O oh, the people of Dawood, the family of Dawood, act in gratitude. Act in gratitude. The ulama, they mention that from acting in gratitude is that an individual uses what Allah Azawajal has blessed him with to gain nearness to Allah Azawajal. To gain nearness to Allah Azawajal. And like the Shaykh mentioned, but the opposite as well. If the individual uses, imagine, subhanAllah, a blessing that Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon you, a blessing that Allah Azawajal, Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon you, but you use it in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So instead of showing gratitude and using it as a means of gaining you nearness to Allah and using it for things that are permissible, but rather you have those individuals that use it to uh, incur the anger of Allah upon them. So the same the same thing which Allah Azawajal has given you as a blessing can either be a means of you getting closer to Allah and gaining His pleasure and entering His Jannah or that same blessing could be a means for you incurring the anger upon Allah, anger of Allah Azawajal and entering you into the hellfire. Did not Allah Azawajal say in the Quran, in Surah Nur, قل للمؤمنين يغض من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم. To the end of the verse in Surah Nur, and look in that verse, Allah Azza wa Jalla actually mentions two blessings. Allah Taala says, "Say to the believing men, to lower their gaze and protect their private parts. To lower their gaze and to protect their private parts. And and so the 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 eyesight, it's a blessing." And even that which Allah Azawajal has given the men and the women to fulfill their desires is also a blessing. It's also a blessing. And we, we, and we already mentioned about the eyesight. But here Allah Azawajal is informing the believing men and, and the following verse, the believing women, to lower your gaze. That blessing, Allah Azawajal is instructing us with regards to that blessing. Preserve that blessing. Preserve that blessing. There are guidelines, there are instructions with regards to that blessing. And if you do not preserve it, if you not, do not abide by those guidelines, the same blessing will be a means of your destruction, will be a means of you entering into the hell of Allah Azawajal. And likewise, the privates. Yani, it's, 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 it's that which Allah Azawajal, Allah Azawajal has given the, 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 the human to, to use, you know, for, for, for cleansing the body and the likes of that. And it's the same, subhanAllah. And it's the same organ that Allah has, you, has given the humans for pleasure. The same exact organ which is used to remove uh, filth from the body and that which is harmful from the body. And it's the same organ which is used to bring extreme pleasure to the body, for the man and for the woman. And Allah Azawajal tells us in that verse in Surah Nur, وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ And they preserve their privates. Protect your privates. And did not our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ يَدْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ فَخِذَيْهِ أَدْمَنُ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever guarantees for me that which is between his cheeks, meaning, his cheekbones, his, his mouth, whoever guarantees, he preserve it, he protects it. That which is between his cheeks, yani his mouth, and that which is between his thighs, yani his privates. I will guarantee for him Jannah. So look at that. Allah Azawajal has bestowed many blessings upon the human. And from those blessings, here we have in Surah Al-Balad, the tongue or the eyes. The eyes, right? That same blessing, if it's used to gain closeness to Allah, 
it will be a means for a person entering into Jannah. And that same blessing, if it's used for, for, for that which is haram, it will be a means for a person in the same exact organ, the same exact body part, will be a means for a person entering into the hellfire. And the same for the next, the next, the, the next statement. وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ and we'll go back to the statement of Shaykh Uthaymin and then we'll expound on that as well. So the Shaykh, he mentioned what Allah says, and the tongue and the lips. What does the Shaykh say? He says, لِسَانٍ لِسَانٍ يَنْتِقُ بِهِ وَشَفَتَيْنِ يَضْبُطُ بِهِمَا النُّقْتِ وَهَذِهِ مِنْ نِعْمِ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمَ لِأَنَّهُ بِهَذَا اللِّسَانِ وَالشَّفَتَيْنِ يَسْتَطِيعُ أن يعبر ما في نفس عما في نفسه ولولا هذا ما استطاع لو كان لا يتكلم فكيف يعبر عما في عما ما في قلبه he said the tongue that a person can speak with and the lips that a person can regulate what they say these are from the greatest blessings of Allah he says because this tongue by way of this tongue and these lips, a person can express that which they're feeling. A person can express that which they're feeling. And if it was not for the tongue and the lips, how could a person express that which is in their heart? How can the person tell others what he's feeling? His opinion. Allahumma illa bi ishara tat'ab. He said, except with sign language. And he said, and that has a great level of difficulty. The person constantly moving his hands to speak and the people that he's speaking to constantly, they have to observe his hands and they have to look at his hands. It's, it, it, there's a level of difficulty there. There is a level of difficulty. He says, well, I can. He said, but from the blessings of Allah is that Allah has given you a tongue which speaks and Allah has given you lips that you can regulate that speech. He said, this is from the blessings of Allah and this is from the magnificent. Yani, uh, shows the, the, the ability, it shows you the magnificent abilities of Allah. He says, He says, he said, he says because the, the, the speech is it's from air, it's from oxygen. And it comes from the vocal area. It comes out. In Wahid. He said when that air comes out of, let's say, the, 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 the vocal cords or whatever, when it comes out and it hits something with it, which, which is in the throat, it becomes a letter. And if it hits something else, it becomes a different letter. But it's still the same oxygen. It's still the same oxygen. And it has one origin. It comes from wherever in, in the lungs. It comes from the lungs or wherever, wherever the air comes from. Right? وَلَكِنْ يَمُرُّ بِشِعَارَاتِ دَقِيقَةِ فِي الْحَلْقِ But it is passing by these different types of uh, pieces of hair or whatever which is in the, the, vocal, the vocal cords. وَفِي الشَّفَتَيْنِ And it's passing. So it's coming from the same origin. It's oxygen. It's air. But it's hitting certain things that turn it into letters and turn it into words and then it reaches the mouth and then it reaches the lips the tongue all of this contributes to making different sounds all of this contributes to making different sounds right then he says fatajid mathalan alba wa shin kulluha bihawa yandafi'u min ar he says, like the ba, it's a letter. The sheen, it's a letter. All of it is coming from the same oxygen. 
from the same air. It's coming from the vocal cords. And because of its passing in certain directions and certain angles and it's coming up, as it comes to the mouth, it comes out in different letters and words and the likes. He says, هَذَا مِنْ تَمَامِ قُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ عَزُّ وَجَلْ He said, this is, shows you the complete might of Allah Azza wa Jal. This shows you the complete might of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's what we wanted to read from the statement of Shaykh Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala.